toilet updates, captain makeovers, an unlikely duet performance. Disney's newest mega ship might be the talk of the sea, but there are many things slipping through the cracks that you need to know about. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. The DFB crew was invited out for a Disney media event to sail aboard the Disney Wish, a new mega ship that's joining the Disney Cruise Line fleet officially on July 14th, 2022. And let's just say we were blown away by the amount of detail and theming and shiny new aspects that set the bar tremendously high for cruise lines. But before you climb aboard the biggest ship of the Disney Cruise Line family or slide down the slide from the atrium, you're gonna wanna know these secrets, not just to impress your friends and family, but to also help you know the best under the radar info that'll make your trip on the open seas 10 times better. But first, if you want even more secrets about the Disney wish, head to disneyfoodblog.com slash wish secrets. I'm working on a pamphlet right now. It's got like 20 pages so far. I think it's going to have more with lots of secrets and updates and things you need to know before you sail on the wish. So if you're interested, head on over there. It's completely free. You just drop your email, sign up for the newsletter, which is also completely free, and you'll get that pamphlet, which is everything I know about the wish right now, all thrown onto a page <laughs> with some pictures. Now this first one I'm super excited about, especially as someone who has cruised before. This can be a very, very annoying situation that they have finally found a solution for. If you've ever tripped over yourself in the middle of the night trying to search for the bathroom, then you know how important this is gonna be. Now, most of the staterooms on the Disney Wish have that split bathroom situation, meaning one part of the bathroom has the sink and shower combo, while a different sectioned off portion has a toilet and sink combo. That way you don't have to do the whole, who needs to use the bathroom before I take a shower thing. But what makes this separate potty room extra special is the added nightlight. On other Disney Cruise Line ships, you often need to turn over an overhead light to use the restroom in the middle of the night. That is if you don't want to just kind of fumble around and figure things out in the dark. And that is blinding and can definitely wake up other members of your group in the room. But now your path is already illuminated, so your midnight pit stop should be smooth sailing. And in addition to the very cool nightlight, you'll also find a little bit of a change in the refrigerators in the rooms. Before they were kind of cold boxes, they were not that cold, and they were pretty small. Now you've got a refrigerated drawer that pulls out from the desk area. It's actually pretty cold and it's a little bit bigger, I think, than what you had in the cold boxes. So pretty excited about that that change as well. Now, I need to talk to you about dining here on the ship. Disney's brand new dinner show is gonna be your new favorite thing ever, and here's why. Arendelle, A Frozen Dining Adventure is an interactive dining experience where you get to celebrate Anna and Kristoff's engagement, thanks to the catering services provided by Oaken's Hardy Party Planning Service and Sauna. Oaken's a jack of all trades, y'all. Now, if you or someone in your group is big on both character meet and greets and the Frozen sensation that swept the nation since 2013, then you're gonna love how many of the Frozen characters you'll be able to meet during the course of a single meal. You've got Elsa, Queen Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and the brand new meet and greet character, the Wandering Oaken himself. But that's not even the best part. The best part is that you get to sing along with these characters too. But don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's not weird. The greatest sing along of all time happens when Kristoff and Oaken take center stage. Now, of course, you know you're gonna have to sing Let It Go at the Frozen meal on the Disney Cruise Line, right? But they've done something a little bit different. Instead of Elsa singing it, You've got this fabulous duo of Kristoff and Oaken leading the audience through a very hilarious rendition of that famous song. Seriously, the two of them need to team up more often because they are really funny. Now to add to the fun, Oaken even showers Kristoff with confetti during the end of the song because what sing-along is truly complete without random confetti rainstorms? And then of course, Oaken has to clean up his confetti. And look, they give me the tiniest broom and the tiniest pan to clean. Now, there are lots of places for you to dine and drink aboard the Disney Wish. And if you're looking for something a little less ice palace-y and more galactic, then brace yourself as we hyperspeed to the next point. So one minute you're sailing across the sea and the next you're sailing across the galaxy. How do you pull off such a magic trick aboard the Disney Wish? By checking out the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge. But if you're not careful, you can miss out on this otherworldly experience completely. Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge is designed to look like Dryden Voss's sleek and metallic ship from Solo, a Star Wars story. Here you'll be able to order intergalactic concoctions and interactive tasting experiences. During the day, guests of all ages will be able to swing by the lounge and check out this immersive spaceship within a cruise ship 
ship, which is totally worth it to see the galactic real-time window views. The lounge's window reminds me of those windows in Epcot Space 220 restaurant, only this is smaller, with more jumps into hyperspeed every seven minutes, and more otherworldly planets you pass by. However, the hyperspace lounge becomes an adult-only experience in the evening, where guests 21 and older will be able to order all sorts of concoctions, including maybe the $5,000 kyber crystal drink, you know, in case you've got all this extra money just lying around your stateroom that you don't know what to do with. But don't panic, that's by far and away the most expensive cocktail at the hyperspace lounge. But here's where things get tricky. You see, this lounge gets mighty popular, and it's also a very small space. So evening reservations might be required when you visit. Now, nobody told us anything about reservations for hyperspace lounge when we were on the ship, and so we kind of had to stumble into it when we tried to go to hyperspace the first time. They basically said, we're full tonight for the whole night. You don't get to go in. Uh, you need a reservation for tomorrow. So let our mistake be your success. On your first evening aboard the Wish, go check and see if you can get a reservation for Hyperspace Lounge that night. If it's already booked, you might be able to get one for the next night. The most important thing to remember here is to check out the Hyperspace Lounge earlier rather than on that last night of your trip. Otherwise, you may have to find your yo-ho-ho and a bottle of rum elsewhere aboard the mega ship. Now, if you have any questions about this, I have another great tip for you. Something I used a lot on the ship was the guest services chat on the app. So if you haven't already downloaded the Disney Cruise Line app, you'll want to do that if you're going on a cruise. This is where you're going to get your map of the ship. It's where you're going to make your dining reservations for those adult dining experiences. Book your port adventures. There's lots you can do on this app that you couldn't ever do before. One of the things I love the most is the guest services chat. I used it multiple times to check out things like when our suitcases had to be ready to go on the last night of the cruise, what time certain things opened, if the aqua mouse was running, etc, etc. Also on the app, use it for online check-in and also see when characters are meeting. That's super helpful. Now, this next piece of info is super important for those of us who like to get some fresh air every day on the ship. If you're feeling antsy aboard any of the Disney cruise ships, or you just want to keep up with your regular workout routine, even at sea, you can walk, jog, or sprint around the running tracks. Usually it's deck four on the ships. But the running track for the Disney Wish is, like, non-existent. Right now, the track is pretty broken up and covers various parts of decks four, five, and six, and you'll have to go up and down stairs to access other sections of the path. So just keep in mind that you're not going to have a continuous run running track aboard the Wish. Yes, there's a great fitness center, but for those of us who actually like to go for a walk where our bodies move different places, yeah, not really an option on the Wish. Now that said, here's something the Wish does have that the other ships don't that I absolutely love. The Disney Wish has 10 different pools and water play areas. They've kind of broken up all the pools into lots of different places instead of having them all in one place. But which of these pools is the least crowded and most relaxing of them all? You probably think I'm going to talk about that infinity pool at the adults only cove area, but I'm not because you know what? That's not not crowded. That is very crowded. That's like people soup in there most of the time. I'm talking about the Chippendale pool. It's located at the front of the ship. This pool was actually conceived of as a family-friendly pool, especially for people who have some sensory concerns. People who maybe don't want to be surrounded by hubbub and all the things that are usually going on on that deck 11. Ice cream, fast food, movies on the funnel, lots of pools, lots of splash areas, aqua mouse area, right? If you just want a little bit of calm, if you have kids who need to be a little bit less stimulated, then the Chippendale pool on deck 14 is for you. It's tough out of the way from the rest of the hullabaloo. And although you won't experience immense Disney theming here, you get a low key experience where you can take a quiet dip or settle in on the lounge chairs for a bit. You can also hit up the nearby Currents pool bar for fruity cocktail or other sea-based spirit. And I'm just gonna say for those of us who kind of like to get away from it all a little bit, this is going to be very, very useful. Now, do not make fun of me for this next point. I know I'm talking about the stateroom bathrooms again, but hear me out. I am just very impressed by some of the new bathroom setups on The Wish. The split bathrooms and the toilet night lights are awesome, but I experienced my best posh life every time I stepped into the stateroom shower. Now, not all showers are created the same on The Wish. Some of the staterooms still have those little round showers that they have on the other ships, but some of them now have these larger rectangular tubs that are much larger than the 
the other ones and they're glassed in so you don't have to basically flood your whole bathroom every time you take a shower like you used to on the magic and for all you parents out there you're gonna be happy to know that a lot of these rooms do have a little bit larger bathtub than you might be used to on cruise lines so you don't have to worry about washing your tiny tyke in one of the sinks or making them take a shower when they're not ready or don't know how to now the bathroom setups aren't the only thing that is improved between the older Disney Cruise Line ships and the Disney Wish. We're going to go talk about the Festival of Foods. You've got a lot to do on the Wish and only so much time to do it all. Good thing there's fast food available on the pool deck, right? But not just any fast food. Like this time, it's really good fast food. Now, don't get me wrong. I have always been a proponent of the Disney Cruise Line chicken tenders. I love them. You love them. We all love them. But Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods brings the fast food situation to a new level. Are there still chicken tenders? Absolutely. Don't worry about it. Goofy's got you covered. But now you can choose to order from Mickey's Smokestack barbecue which is amazing donald's cantina which is basically chipotle daisy's pizza pies not that great but fine and then you've got goofy's grill with those hot dogs burgers and chicken tenders again and of course you've got sweet minis ice cream now this operates a lot like food court dining which is nice when you've got a range of different eaters in your group and it's all included in your cruise but what's really nice is the quality of the food here which seems to be 10 times better than the quick service meals i've had on other disney cruise line ships not to mention this is the first time a disney cruise has offered quick service Mexican inspired dishes and barbecue options. So it's awesome to see that expanded variety. But just remember, Sweet Minnie's ice cream, that's basically the analog to you being able to get your own ice cream on other ships. Whereas the Wish is relatively touchless, so they make the ice cream for you here. So Festival of Foods is pretty much open most of the day. Most of the food is included in the price of your cruise, just like the other restaurants aboard too. So most of your extra food and drink expenses are gonna come from specialty beverages, premium eats at the fancier restaurants, stuff like that. Now, next up, a rather bizarre issue we've never come across on the Disney Cruise Line until now. Like I said, a lot of the wish is touchless. You can't make your own ice cream anymore, for example, and the elevators are a little upsetting. All of the elevators on the wish have touchless button panels. Now, these are elevator buttons you don't have to physically press, and they sound great on paper, but in practice, it ends up looking a lot more like that one scene in Elf when Buddy triggers all the buttons to make them light up like a Christmas tree. If someone leans against the touchless button panel, which happens all the time since the elevators are packed out and people like press up against the wall to let other people in then the person leaning against the panel is going to wind up accidentally activating every button for every floor meaning you're going to have to make constant stops on the way to your destination in that packed elevator it is a nuisance for sure and if you want to try to avoid triggering all the buttons do not and i repeat do not lean up against that button panel bonus elevator fun facts there is no grand elevator bank in the atrium of the disney wish like you're going to find on the other disney cruises apparently Apparently the architects did a bunch of studies and decided nobody uses those elevators. They use the forward and aft elevators instead. So the only elevators you're gonna find are located at the front and the back of the ship, but they've moved those elevator banks a little closer so it doesn't feel like you're walking too far away. Now, here's the tip. Only certain elevators go up to the top floors. So if you press the up button on floor six, for example, and you wanna go to floor 13 to go to Palo, only the farthest elevators in the bank are gonna take you there. The rest are gonna stop at 11 or 12. So if you're on floor six and you press the up elevator and an elevator comes, you're gonna to have to look in that elevator and see if that one goes to 13 or not. Now, we were talking about going up. Now it's time to go down the slide. That's right. There is an awesome addition to the Disney Wish, and it's a slide from the Grand Hall Atrium down to the kids' clubs. So as soon as your kids run into the ship, they can jump on that slide and go right down to the kids' club and start having fun. It's super fun. It's super cute. And I think they're really going to love it. Okay, now, friends and shipmates, this next point is very, very important, especially if you're trying to avoid any and all hassles and stressors before your big trip. The pre-trip COVID testing was difficult for multiple reasons. Here's the thing, in order to sail on Disney Cruise Line, you have to be vaccinated and you have to get a negative COVID test within 48 hours of sailing. Now, when you get your ship reservation, you can go online to the Inspire Diagnostic Safe Passage system where you'll purchase a test and schedule a testing appointment, which can take place either virtually or at a select on-site location. After your appointment, a telehealth doctor will upload your results to the Safe Passage system and you should be good to go. Unfortunately, our COVID testing kits did not arrive on time and the reason for that is because these types of media events usually get reservation info to the guests pretty late in the game because they've got a lot of stuff they got to get done. So, if you're going on the Wish and you get your reservation, 
reservation number as soon as you book, you can get this whole COVID testing process started way in advance. However, if you're running into a situation where you're late to the reservation game and you're afraid your COVID testing kit won't arrive on time, it's important to know that Inspire Diagnostics and their telehealth system will allow you to use other FDA approved over-the-counter tests like Binax Now and Alume. So stay with me folks because you don't realize how stressful this can be if you're not 100% prepared for it ahead of time. You're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on this cruise and if you don't test negative, you can't go. So there are a few other options to use too, just for peace of mind. You can use your own over-the-counter tests and book through a different telehealth system instead of Inspire if you'd like. The only difference there is that you have to upload your own results. So if you happen to go through a different testing program like EMAT or OnPoint and they send you your results by email, you can upload those results within that two-day window and still be able to receive your clear to sale seal of approval, meaning you don't have to worry about testing at the ship terminal. So my recommendation, get it done before you leave for your trip. Get it done in that 48 hour window before you board the ship because the last thing you want to do is be all packed and ready to go and then test positive. All right, thanks for coming to my TED talk about that. Let's move on to coffee. Even if you're not a huge fan of coffee or anything caffeinated that makes you feel a little extra jittery in the morning, you still want to know about these cozy escapes aboard the Disney Wish because they got more to offer than just coffee. The Disney Wish has a couple of specialty coffee bars that provide souped up lattes and cocktails. For starters, we've got the Wishing Star Cafe located on deck four, which is themed around the famous Wishing Star from Disney's Pinocchio. The Wishing Star Cafe is a small, quaint space that can get rather busy throughout the day. So if you're struggling to find a seat, you may want to come around here later in the afternoon. Standard lattes and caffeinated beverages can be spruced up with added flavorings of your choice like caramel or coconut or both if you're living large and you can even get some fun latte art in the foam just for a little extra whimsy. Now another specialty coffee bar which ended up being my personal home away from home while I was on the ship was over at Marceline Market. Marceline is named after Marceline, Missouri, Walt Disney's childhood hometown and functions like a food hall with 10 different stations inspired by international marketplaces from around the world. And although the food didn't exactly blow us away time and again, Marceline Market did have a specialty coffee bar which you don't find on other ships that made coming here worth the visit. This coffee bar has similar offerings to what you'll find over at the Wishing Star Cafe, along with a few off-menu items that you might be able to order as well, depending on your barista. But I liked getting drinks at Marceline more than the Wishing Star Cafe because of the hip coffee shop vibes going on here with way more room to spread out. It's a great place to get some work done if you need to, or just have a casual conversation with your group. The various dining areas around Marceline Market are also subtly themed around Disney characters, but my favorite room was themed after Maurice from Beauty and the beast. Now this is not in the you'll be surrounded by failed inventions sort of way, but a more subtle steampunk kind of way. Maurice's room is way at the end of the market, right across from the little coffee shop, which makes it feel like a secret hideout, even though it's not. It's just an area of the food hall that not a lot of people take the time to track down, kind of like the Chip and Dale pool I talked about earlier. Basically, you gotta be willing to do some extra exploring to find these hidden getaways that'll make your trip more enjoyable. Now, we've got some important specialty coffee info. Remember how I told you some drinks would not be included with the price of the cruise? Yeah, the coffee bars do cost extra friends, but if you're a big latte cappuccino caffeine fan, spending a few extra bucks on coffee aboard the ship at one of these locations could be worth it for you. But now that we've had our fill of coffee and good vibes, let's explore more fun extras and even more good vibes. Now I have a super, super exciting note for you. There's a hidden bourbon bar inside the Disney Wish and you'll only be able to find it if you need a haircut. Yep, you heard me. At Hook's Barbary, inspired by that blasted hook-handed captain from Peter Pan, you can get a fresh shave and a haircut for more than two bits, I'm afraid. And there are also nail and skincare services offered here, but you can't spell Barbary without bar, right? One of the most unique parts of Hook's Barbary is the hidden bar stocked with pre-prohibition bourbons, vintage whiskey and port, aged rum, and pre premium spirits. It'll be hard to go back to your regular haircut routine after a visit to this Neverland barbershop. Along with Hook's Barbary, there's also an untangled salon themed around the lost princess Rapunzel, who hands down has the best magic hair ever. And this salon offers services like haircuts, hairstyling, manicures, pedicures, and teeth whitening even. Both Hook's Barbary and Untangled Salon are available to wish guests for a separate price, and you can make reservations for these as well. And if you're not the only one who needs a makeover, your kids do too, then it's time to go to Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique but this is a little bit different than what you'll find in the parks. Bibbidi Bobbidi, if you don't know, is a classy looking storybook salon where kids ages three to 12 can get a Disney-rific makeover. We're talking fancy costumes, glittery makeup, spruced up hairdos, all taking shape in a salon setting with polished wood details, candled chandeliers, and cutesy essences influenced by our one-shoed wonder, Cinderella. Much like the other Bibbidi Bobbidi boutiques, these salons will dress your kid up as their favorite Disney princess or a knight in shining armor or pirate, whatever, but aboard the Disney cruise 
cruise line, there's another option that kids can choose from. Instead of looking like they just stepped out of a fairy tale, they can choose to dress up as Captain Minnie Mouse or Captain Mickey Mouse. This is something available on all Disney Cruise Lines, but the style varies depending on which ship you're sailing on. The Disney Wishes Bibbidi Bobbidi is also offering a totally new Princess Ariel makeover with a dress that aligns more with the Ariel featured in the new Disney The Little Mermaid stage adaptation that you can watch aboard this mega ship. I've been off the ship for just a couple of days and those are some of the biggest tips, the most important new things you need to hear about, and some of my favorite parts of the ship. And don't forget, if you want even more secrets about the Disney Wish, head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Wish Secrets and you can sign up for a completely free PDF, lots of information, everything I know right now, all of my tips and secrets and things I didn't learn on the ship until day three that really, really needed to know on day one, all of that stuff is right in that little booklet for you. Thanks for sailing the seas with us aboard the Disney Wish. Keep checking back on the DFB website and YouTube page as we continue to reveal even more details about this new cruise line. And of course, we're going to have a couple more videos in our Disney Wish series where we're going to talk about all the food. Don't worry, we'll get to all of it and a couple of other secrets as well. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.